I think the measurement in life is not sometimes what you accomplish, sometimes it's what you overcome, what you overcome, what you overcome. Because of all the things that happened during the course of this season with us, we were forced to come together because we had already been counted out before the first kickoff. And because of that, uh, we had to come together as a group of 45 men with one goal, and that was to prove everybody else wrong. This year, uh, we weren't the, the most talented team, but we were the best team. And I think that uh, that's what made this year special. If the Super Bowl trophy was awarded to the team that overcame the toughest tests, the Chicago Bears would be the winner. A line without Jim Covert for much of the year would no longer clear the way for the retired Walter Payton. Nor could they be certain of whom would direct the rebuilt offense, as injuries pressed three different quarterbacks into duty. Lost was manpower. Found was willpower as Chicago retooled its attack and made the big play. These wounded bears stayed together and survived. In the end, they fought through the fog, the chilling rain, the swirling snow, and gloom of night to earn their fifth straight division title. Players relieved Mike Ditka of his cigars after his heart attack, then fired them up when he was named coach of the year. With Richard Dent gone for the playoff push, Sean Gale on crutches, and four 1987 starters lost before opening day, new faces man the familiar furious defense. The 1988 Chicago Bears, they took the year personally. They endured trial after trial, proving they were indeed champions at heart. There are easier ways to start a season than by facing Miami's Dan Marino. But in the overcast opener, Marino's right arm was no match for Chicago's young leg. The Bears controlled the ball for three quarters, kept Marino off the field, and dominated the Dolphins 34-7. Jumped to count too soon, it appeared. On the right side, Sanders pops it loose to the end zone for the touchdown. Mike Ditka met the press. Ball control was good. We ran the ball. We ran the ball. We run. We got good offensive linemen. We run the ball well. We're proud of our people. We like our people. For those who don't like our people, that's tough. We like them. On the road in Indianapolis, Ditka's young guns edged the Colts 17-13, then reloaded for Minnesota. Chicago suffered its worst defeat of the season, 31 to seven. To push them forward, Ditka used a little reverse psychology. We're gonna try to do what we can do to bounce back. But uh, you're right, the, the, the passing of the torch, I guess it's almost a foregone conclusion that we're going for the wild card right now, and I don't think there's any other way to look at it. <laughs> I'm serious, I don't know what you're laughing at. I mean, that's the outside chance we have is a wild card. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, it was disturbing for some of the guys. Um, but I, I asked him, I said, hey, are you giving up on us? He said, no, there's no way in the world I'd ever do that. Second down and eight yards to go. Chicago, Green Bay 45. Jim Anderson sweeping right. He makes the turn. He's to the 35, 30. Yes, he's going. Clear. He's going all the way uh -huh. to the 10, 5, uh -huh. touchdown, Neil Anderson. 
there would be no passing of the torch as the Bears rolled to five straight wins as the defense held opponents to single digits for five straight weeks. Thomas Sanders sealed the 24-6 pacing of the Packers while big plays did in the undefeated Bills. Jim McMahon takes the snap and backpedals from the pocket. McMahon pops it over the middle. Oh, Morris across the 45. Cut He's right going to the He's going to go. Right away. Pro Richard Dent was absolutely unblockable. All Pro Jay Hilgenberg picked up every stunt. But it was unlikely hitman Jim McMahon who served up the biggest block of all in a 24 to 3 win. Anderson gives oh. it up to Jeffrey oh, yeah, yeah. He got by the linebacker Bennett. He has some open field. Good He's good. Good. 45 down the right side, breaks into the clear. He to the 20, to the 15, 10. The Lions were disposed of 24 to 7, as Long and Hilger were tossed around while McMahon and Mike Tomzak each tossed touchdowns. Third down, McMahon back to the nose, slants to the right side, he's got McKinnon to the five, oh. and touchdown! Tomzak looks to the air, rolls right, now stops, drills the middle, got a touchdown. man wide open, oh. touchdown, Ron oh. Morris! Ditka's September suggestion of passing the torch ignited an eternal flame in his Bears as McKinnon and Ron Morris helped close in on an undefeated October. Snap to Jim McMahon out of the shotgun, looks downfield, winds up, rainbows left side for Morris, and he makes a oh, right. While young defenders helped stuff the Cowboys 17 to seven, it was veteran Mike Singletary who landed the hit of the year. The only thing that I can say is I was just coming at a, at a good angle. And uh, he was in a position where he had just decided to maybe I'll slide. And uh, I just came and, and uh, got a, a great opportunity to hit him. A hit like that, I wouldn't want anybody to be on the other end of that. That's just something that uh, is unfortunate. With Otis going down and then the loss of Wilbur Marshall, Mike's uh, role became that much more important. And aside from the fact that he was going to have to control the middle, he had to make sure that both Jim Morrissey and Ron Rivera were on the same page. And that can be a difficult task, especially when you've got to also lead an entire defense. But Mike was up for it. No NFL player has greater dedication than Mike Singletary. For the six-time Pro Bowler, the projector is on far more than the pads. And for a while, he focused on those lined up next to him, as well as those across from him. But not for long. Number 51, Jim Morrissey listened well and learned quickly, as did Ron Rivera, number 59. The young linebackers manned the flats. The veteran tackles flattened men. Arkansas's Dan Hampton intimidated with his mere presence. Texas's Steve McMichael led the team in sacks. Together they thought as one and delivered the blows of 10. Quarterbacks sometimes sacked themselves or ran headlong into Al Harris. And then there was Richard Dent. There is no better pure pass rusher in the game today. Dent broke many a passer's will before breaking his leg in the season's 13th week. Without Dent, Gale, and the retired Gary Fensick, Ow! Dave Durson tightened up his chin strap and forged ahead. Vestie Jackson led the team with eight interceptions. Maurice Douglas, Mike Richardson, David Tate, and Todd Crum made for a stiff final line of defense. When it was over, Vince Tobin's refurbished, rethought, disguised coverage defense allowed the fewest points in the entire NFL.
The defense spearheaded the winning streak, and it would require all they had to extend that streak to five against San Francisco. I think our defensive line is playing very well this year. Richard and McMichael and, and Al Harris and myself, I think we're the basis that we had to build upon. And like I said in training camp, the, de the team and the defensive team will go as far as the front four carry us. This week, we're going to have to carry a lot. In front of Monday Night Millions, Jerry Rice and the Niners march the length of the field on their first possession. Your first drive and a team go down on you and put it in, it, it's not a good feeling, you know. You got to get some confidence back and you got to let them know you mean business. Okay, you got one, but who says you can get any more? And that's the attitude that we took and we just went, we went to work from there on. We just decided they wouldn't get any more points. San Francisco saw a great deal of Dent, Singletary, and Hampton, but never caught another glimpse of the Bear end zone. Chicago held a slim 10-9 lead, a lead the defense made stand on fourth down with just over a minute left to play. Holding! Champions aren't always great but they are when they have to be. At seven and one, the Bears were playing with the heart of a champion. Come on, Mike, a little bit of Mike Ditka on, builds them up. He also knocks them down. Iron Mike is the embodiment of the team. And on November the 2nd, the Bear organization was rocked. Good afternoon, I'm Linda McLennan. And I'm Lester Holt, topping our news today at 4.30. The coach of the Chicago Bears, Mike Ditka, recovering tonight from a heart attack. At this hour, Coach Ditka is in serious condition at Lake Forest Hospital. Mike Ditka is known for his regular early morning workout regimen. Today's workout ended abruptly. Chest pains made it difficult for the coach to get dressed for a George Bush campaign appearance. The greatest thing we got going for us is life, and the greatest thing we have going within that life is the human body. Well, the players are surprised, but uh, I knew I had a heart. We were humbled, we were sorrowed. Um, we thought for a while there, Mike Dicka was immortal. You know, nothing would happen to him. He trained so vigorously, he took such an aggressive approach to coaching the game, and you know, all of a sudden, his life would have passed by him in one second. A lot of guys are saying that it was, it was a ploy to see how we would rally around and how we would play. And uh, Mike Dicka is our driving force. It always has been. And we love him dearly. And I think he is a reflection of the way we play. All he would want of us to do is go out there and play at 100% and do the best that we could do. They didn't win for interim coach Vince Tobin or Mike Ditka. They won for themselves, a trait infused in them by their head coach. Whatever it took, no matter the cost, even the youngest Bears, 13 rookies in all, assembled by Vice President Bill Tobin and his staff, had an impact. Men like Brad Muster, these champions at heart were on a mission, their fifth straight division title. Mark Bortz and the return of Jim Covert helped trample Tampa Bay twice, while Neil Anderson personally took care of the Packers. Second down of four yards to go from the 20. Toss Anderson looks to cut it back, now bounces to his right. He's across the 35 to the 40. He's going to the defender to the 50. left into the clear. Neil Anderson to the 30, being chased by Dave Brown to the 20. Down the left sideline to the 10 to the 5. Their leader returned in the second game of a new four-game winning streak, and against the defending champion Redskins, his men went to the mat for him, literally. Matsui scored, Tomzak scored, 
and a 34-14 blowout was underway. Snap to Tom Zack, a third down. He fires the left side. Gentry! Touchdown! And touchdown! And here's the give deal. Anderson from Jim Harbaugh. Anderson slanting to the left. Anderson oh, makes the turn. Down the left side going. lines. He's gone! To the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! There are two constants in our offense. One is the offensive line, and, and two is with Neil Anderson. He's very versatile. He's the type of guy, when he takes a hit, a hard hit, he won't let you know it. He'll get back in the huddle and say, give me the ball again. Keith Van Horn, Tom Thayer, and John Wojciechowski helped pave the way for over 1,100 Neil Anderson rushing yards. But in Chicago, backs must do more than carry the ball, as Anderson caught passes for nearly 400 yards. And perhaps it was his predecessor, Walter Payton, who showed Neil there's a certain sweetness to making a perfect block. I call him Charlie because his name is Charles Neal Anderson, and I have great respect for Charles Neal Anderson because I think that Charles Neal Anderson can be one of the great backs in this game. He made some runs this year that uh, we haven't seen in a long time, and we've had the greatest running back in the world here. 35, 40, Anderson, 35, cuts to the middle at the 30, 25, 20. He might go. Neal Anderson, touchdown, Chicago. In a year of hurdles and hardships, Neal Anderson was a constant. And in the season's 15th week, the division title they fought so hard for was at last within reach. December at Soldier Field, snow falling, and a familiar old foe, the Detroit Lions. Everyone contributed. Jim Harbaugh and Kevin Butler stepped forward this time with the title eight seconds and 32 yards away. Fourth down with eight seconds to go. The Bears are trailing 12 to 10 out of the hole of Brian Wagner. I've got better blunts. Hilgenberg on the snap. Here it is. Placement made. The kick by Butler. Sales to the We face adversities. We looked them in the eye and we beat them. With Mike Ditka losing the head coach, the motivator of this team, we lost them. We looked adverse in the eye. We beat it. And I think it did a lot for the team to show that we could play without him, but it also showed us that we needed him to be a powerful team like we are right now. For us, it was just a personal thing. And uh, then in preparation for the playoffs, nothing more had to be said. All right, here we go. The Eagles have never beaten the Bears in Chicago. And they wouldn't this time either, as Tom Zack and McKinnon got the Bears off to a lightning start. Jeffrey comes in motion to the near side, now turns back the other way, snap to Tom Zack, rushes on. Tom Zack has time, he rainbows the right side, McKinnon wide open, ahead of the field, yeah. to the 30, to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, yeah. touchdown Bears! 64 yards! Yes. Give us Anderson, first up, the ball, it's touchdown! Illinois poet Carl Sandburg wrote, the fog creeps in on little cat feet. In moments, Soldier Field was shrouded in an eerie thick mist. Under pressure and a smothering blanket of fog in a game where announcers couldn't announce, coordinators couldn't coordinate, and fans couldn't see, the Bear defense made the plays that had to be made. You can get ground all you want, but you got to hold them to a field goal. You don't want to let them in the end zone. Here's the snap now to Cunningham on first and ten with no huddle. He fired the left side, and it's intercepted, I believe. Intercepted by the Bears and returned downfield. I can't see. I cannot see him. I wonder if it's Bo Douglas. It is Bo Douglas. Who football. comes across the field through the fog with the football in his left arm. You know, actually, if Mike Ditka had come across the field with the ball, we could have assumed he intercepted it. <laughs> uh... Chicago was one victory away from Super Bowl 23.
I think the measurement in life is not sometimes what you accomplish, sometimes it's what you overcome, what you overcome, what you overcome. Finally, the Chicago Bears faced an opponent they couldn't overcome. There would be no trip to Miami. A day of promise melted into a night of unfulfilled dreams. Learning from defeat is not the bare approach. Winning is everything. A world championship and five consecutive division titles in the 80s attest to that. It's a sense of family honor, and the Bear family will continue its winning ways. What the Bears are doing, they're looking towards the future. They're getting people with the right type of attitudes, the right caliber, the right temperament, so they can blend them in. You've seen it during this year. A lot of people have been hurt. They brought other people in, and it seemingly like things haven't even slowed down simply because of the blend, the mixture, and the attitude. The mix here has been such a tremendous mix that things are always going to go out right simply because the people have the right attitude. The coaches, they know what it takes to win. The uh, players, they know what they have to put out, so they know what it takes to win. They know what it feels like to win, and they want to continue to win. It's sort of like a family. As Mike Ditka says, sometimes it's not what you accomplish, but what you overcome. Accomplishment and championships are the bottom line. But in order to accomplish anything, you must have heart. The Chicago Bears are champions at heart. <laughs>